Now we're going to begin a study that we're going to start off, and we may break away and do other things as the Lord leads, but we're going to start a, sto uh, a study, and we're going to start it tonight with the existence of God, and we're going to work our way through the Bible. To the Lord comes, to may the Lord gives me a church, or whatever we have, but we're going to start the very foundation of this study tonight. And we're not going to look to next week. We're not going to look to tomorrow. We're going to look to tonight. We're going to study the existence of God. Very foundation. As you turn your Bibles to Genesis 1-1. This is not a book study. This is not a chapter study. This is a study that we're going to move as the Lord allows. And the very first thing is about God. And it says... In Genesis 1 1, the King James Bible only. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, it assumes the assistance of God. God is there. In the beginning, God. You're not even one, two, three, four words into the Bible, and you have God. Jesus never questioned. The existence of God. No, not one writer in the 66 books that are in our Bible ever tries to prove God's existence. It is a matter of fact that God exists. And when somebody comes up to you and says, well, show me God. You hand them the Bible. Well, I don't believe. There you go. Now, God appears 4,111 times. In 3,579 verses, and it could be plus or minus, there could be error. But God is God. And the thing is, everyone has a God, including atheists. Well, I don't believe in God. You are God. Evolution is God. Whatever you believe of what and where and all that is to be, that's a God. Now, with that fact that the Bible states, let's look at Exodus 3 6. We're going to look at a lot of scriptures through these studies, and nothing but scriptures. It's not about what I have to say, it's not about what some college professor has to say, it's what does God have to say. Oh, I, and you don't believe the book? Well, I don't expect you to stay tuned very long. I don't think you're going to stay long with these studies. I think in Exodus 3, 6, as we're there, I think the one that really loves the Lord and really wants to study, really wants to know and, and get a fellowship and a sweet relationship with God is going to stay. And if you are an agnostic, and you really are searching for the truth, stay with us. And don't back away and don't turn away. Listen to what God has to say about himself. Now we're going to look at a few passages here where God is mentioned. Five times in each verse. And the first place you see this is Exodus 3, 6. By the way, if you break it down, the, small, the lowest common denominator, you've got 3, 3, 3. You can break 6 down to 3 and 3. 3 is the Trinity. 3 plus 6 is 9, the fruits of the spirits. We may even eventually within time get into the Bible. There's, there's a vast we can go with this. And where we're going, 
We're going to start off with God and we're going to go to how to live as a Christian. But you can't start off being a Christian if you don't know what God is or who God is. And it says, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father. This is God talking to Moses. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now he's at the burning bush. And God says, I am the God of, of thy father. I lost Moses' father's name there real quick in my mind. But it shows that Moses' father followed God, even in Egypt. And his, his father's name is, is ready to spill out. I'm the God of Abraham. The foundation and source of the Jewish people. Abraham is the first Jew. He's the father of the Jews. The God of Isaac. Now it does not say Ishmael. And did not say Abram. Ishmael's father was Abram, not Abraham. Sorry, whatever magazine you were that's, you know, Abraham's the father of Christianity and a Muslim. Sorry, it's wrong. You had a false publication because Ishmael's father was Abram. The God of Jacob. That is the foundation of the Jewish race. The Jewish God. And later on we will probably get into how Jesus Christ is not a Gentile as the pictures proclaim him to be. But he's Jewish. You are in the line of Lord Jesus Christ. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Anywhere you subsane with another name you don't have the line of Jesus. But God is speaking to Moses and he says, I am God. And God did not sit Moses down and say, well, let me explain to you how I No, It never does. He said, well, where did God come from? That's never the question. Well, who made God? That's never the question. The question is, who God made as a creator? In verse 15, chapter 3, verse 15, and God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt, thou shalt, thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me, Moses, unto you, the Jews. And this is my name forever. And this is mentioned. And this is my memorial unto all generations. What was that name? He said, I am that I am. Verse 14. I am, not I was. Or I will be. God's name is always present. Tense. Never past. Never future. But God is always is. So this is twice that he's spoken to Moses about this. And go to Matthew 22, 32. We'll see what Jesus has to say. When you go to Matthew 22, 32, you find something that's very remarkable. And I'll tell you after we read it. Matthew twenty two thirty two. This is Jesus speaking. If you got a red letter Bible, and he says in verse thirty one unto you by God saying, "All right, this is what God said: I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living." And this was quoted back in Exodus 3, 6 and 15. You know what Jesus did? 
He told you what we read in Exodus 3 was true. That's approved of God. That God is the God of the Jews, not America. You're not going to have new America. You're going to have new Jerusalem. And God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. In all true actuality, no one ever dies. All are eternal. Either you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. So the Bible granted that God exists. There's never a question. Only those who want to live outside the Bible. And when you do have somebody come up to you and, oh, show me God. or And you tell them that the Bible just takes it for granted. And show them some of the passages. If they don't want to hear it, they don't want to know about God. They just want an excuse. They want to fight because the challengers you have to this atheists will challenge God we'll talk about them much skeptics read Proverbs chapter 1 about uh, mockers agnostics and hecklers well read that Proverbs chapter 1 tells you about those group of people Atheists, you know, they don't believe in anything. Like a bet. I'll tell you right now, an atheist believes in something. No, I don't. You got an automobile? You believe when, when you put that key in the slot and turn it, you believe your car is going to start. You got just as much faith as I do. But your, your God is Ford, Lincoln, or, or Mercury, or General Motors. Skeptic, I mean, he's just always challenging. You're not going to get anywhere with a skeptic. He's looking for every excuse and every possible excuse. Agnostic, you, you can deal with them. They're not sure. But again, it's an excuse. Well, if I say there's a God, and I say there isn't a God, in case there is a God, I can get by. In case there isn't a God, well, you know, eat, drink, and be merry. And hecklers. You get involved with, with Mark chapter 16, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel, you'll find out what hecklers are. They just want to make fun. They were making fun of Jesus from the time that he was being beaten and ripped and, and, and the crown of thorns all the way to his death. There were hecklers. So, prove to me what do you do? Somebody comes up to you and says, prove to me There is no proof needed. Psalms 14.1. When you're dealing with a, a true, sincere person, he's not, he's not going to get on God's case right away. He's going to listen to you. But prove to me, Psalm 14, verse 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's an atheist in the, in the Bible. Don't call me a fool. I didn't call you a fool. God did. Well, I don't believe in him. Oh. And God's going to be upset because you don't believe in him. I can probably sit down right now and write down 25 names of people I do know who know God. Are you going to call 25 people a liar? And believe me, I've told my own person, I've told my personal testimony and had people call me a liar. They are corrupt. An atheist is corrupt. He does not want to know the truth. They have done abominable works. There's your problem right there. They know. They don't want to be convicted. 
They are there. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So see how God has lumped them right in there. All have sinned, come to short of the glory of God. There is none that doeth right. There is no proven needed. Because already in his heart, he knows, he believes there is no God. Can you get anywhere with an atheist? No. The first thing you need to realize is it is heart and not head trouble. He's not thinking. His emotions, in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things. He believes the source of belief. In his life is the heart. And there's trouble. Because all motive from the Bible comes from the heart. Now why is he like that? Colossians 2.14 Colossians 2.14 And this may not be the right. This may be a boo boo. But I get from that. I'm in Colossians. I'm in 2.14. And that's not it. Now, let me check somewhere else real quick. What I get from not checking out my. Well, there is a place in the Bible that Paul says that the natural man I know where I know where it is in the Bible right in my Bible. Let me try to just go through this real quick. It says the natural man cannot receive I'm not going to spend all night. This is the first booboo. It happens. I'm a sinner. First Corinthians 2.14. Let's try that one. First Corinthians 2.14. That's it right there. So I was supposed to write an R instead of an L. That's the problem. I need to write first, so that's even more of a problem. Oh, it was wrong. My writing. It says in 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man, that's, what is that? That's a man that's born. Born of a woman. See where we're going with this one. Receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now, if you run over to John 14.17, we're not going to go there. But John 14.17 says, the Holy Spirit does not go into the lost. You cannot receive, the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. So, the guy that claims to be an atheist, skeptic, agnostic, heckler, and all that, he does not have in him the Spirit of God. And Christian, you need to realize that when you deal with him, don't poke phone in him right away. Deal with him as, you know what? They are ignorant. They don't know. They don't know any better. That's why the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Peter says to be ready at all times to give people an answer in the hope of uh, something. They are foolishness unto him. Christian, your Bible, your God, your Jesus that died on the cross is foolish, and the Bible records it. They look at it, you're, you're trusting in a, in a Jewish man that died for your sins. Yes. Well, I'm just going to say there's no God. And the light is put out that God gives them. 
the revelation stops. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So an unsaved man does not know about God. And God will give him light and God will give him light. But once he turns it out, a natural man wants to believe in what he can see, what he can touch. And God you cannot see, you cannot touch. So he's not going to believe it. But then again, you, you turn to him and say, well, I don't think you have a brain. Well, yeah, I got a brain. I don't see it. Well, it's in here. No, I can't see it. Let me, let me look through your ear. Well, you're not going to see my brain. Listen, unless I touch and see your brain, I'm not going to believe you have one. Now, see, you can do the same thing. Now, John 14, 17. As I quote it, let's look at it. Let's look at the scriptures. I'm never in a rush. I may stop and you know make this be the only one. I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go. The Lord told me to do and I do. John 14, 17 says, Even the Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, verse 16, whom the world cannot receive. So don't tell me it, you are lost and you have the Holy Spirit. Don't tell me that you're not born again and you don't believe in that, but I have the Spirit. No, you don't. You cannot. Because it sees him not. There's that skeptic. There's that atheist. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. You know what separates me from the, from the, the challengers? I've got God inside me. And I can tell him from Genesis to Revelation. How many chapters there are. How many verses there are. I can go through the whole thing and he's not going to know. And his conduct, his reaction to God, the existence is and what God will give him. Is there a God or isn't there a God? Well, I don't believe it stopped. So it's really hard, if not impossible, to deal with an atheist. Because he already believes there's no God. Now, if he's not truly an atheist, just calls him an atheist by excuse... You can work with them. Deal with Genesis 1-1 in this case. In the beginning, God, if you can't get past that, you're not going to go to John. You're not going to go to the Romans Road. You're not going to go and show him the, uh, John 3-16. You're not going to show him John 3-3. Because if he can't get past in the beginning, God... Listen, you can't go, the, the, my public school won't let my child bring the Bible into school. Why? Because they have a problem with, in the beginning, God. To them, in the beginning, evolution, Big Bang, whatever. Of course they don't want the Bible in the public school. They're not saved. And I can show you countless churches within five-mile radius where I live down here in Daytona Beach that they don't even have the Bible. they got some modern perversion. And don't allow the King James in their church. And will mock the Christian that does carry it. He does not, an unsaved man does not have the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to start off with nature, history, and universe. They admit a supreme intelligence. But if you're dealing with somebody, when you show them or try to show them, they're like, this, I can't see it. Where is it? What are you going to do? 
Listen, you can put a kid in a high chair and give him every good vegetable that's good for his growth. And if he doesn't want it, it's going to be on the floor or over his face. or where, He's not going to put it in his mouth. But put the candy and the sweets and all that, and he'll devour that down. Well, do you know sugar and sweets and all that will kill you? But what is, listen, if you don't believe in God, you don't believe in Satan, the fact is, why does all the bad stuff taste good and all the good stuff taste bad? There's God and there's Satan right there. See, we're going to look at some of that stuff in nature. There are plants that you can rub on a burn. And it'll heal, it'll heal you. And maybe get the scar away. And there's a plant that if you rub on you, you're going to be itching and scratching. There are animals out there that you, you can pet and, and love. And there are animals out there, you do that, you, you're going to end up in a hospital if not dead. Nature. John 7.17 John seven seventeen. What is the real purpose that we're looking at? Right now, God exists. I said just dealing with tonight. If any man who's that? Any man. Isn't that simple? Will do his will. Whose will? God's will. That's God's will. Oh, I wish I knew what God's will is in my life. Well, there's one. He, who? The any man. Shall know of the doctrine. Every man, every woman that is born by the will of God is able to know the doctrine, the teaching. You are born according to John 17, uh, 7, 17, to know the doctrine of God, any man excluding no one. So if you die and go to hell and stand at the great white throne judgment, this verse will come at you and say, you had in you to know the doctrine, the will of me, God speaking. Can I tell you, I grew up as a Roman Catholic. I can remember when, in, in Denison Avenue, New London, Connecticut, Five or six years old, I knew that there was a God, and I would sacrifice worms to him. Cut them in half, me and Jamie. Where did that come from? Why is it when I looked up to the stars, when I, when I heard the, you know about the Christmas story and Jesus and his star, what would make me on December 24th to open up my window and look out there and look for the star of Jesus at seven or eight years old? And that question is going to be answered. And it's already answered that there is an existence in God that we are born with. You are born to know about God. That is God's will. Whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. And Jesus is God and God is Jesus. But Jesus on this planet was doing the will of God. It's obedience to God. Well, I don't believe in God. You show me the proof there is none. I can't do that. 
you show me the proof of God right here in the Bible. Well, that's a man's book. Excuses, excuses. But I've got an excuse that you don't know what we think. See, this word of God, you can burn it. You can destroy it. But I got the Holy Spirit right here in me. I can say honestly, and you can doubt me whatever you want. I can say honestly, right now, I know if I were to take my last breath where, where I will be. Matter of fact, I can tell you right now, I would love to die right now. I would love for the event called the rapture to happen right now because I know where I will be. I know. You know why you don't know or you can't say after your death or the rapture happened? Because you don't believe in God. And I'm talking to the unsaved person. And I can't call you stupid. Because we've looked at scripture to say, you don't understand. And it's foolish. Obedience to God, John 7, 17, and atheists and skeptics and agnostics and hecklers do not want to obey God. These men may be moral, right or wrong. They may be good people in the public. They may be do their thing, but in the eyes of God. See, they're trusting in works, and works is not a salvational thing. It's all based upon faith. God is God, and he is who he is. And millions, if not billions of people throughout time would tell you the same thing. Who are saved and who have the Holy Spirit. Who have a testimony of, uh, of being born again and living for God and doing right. Don't look at the Christians who do wrong and worldly and all that. They don't. They're, they're failures. They are poor testimony. And as we deal with the existence of God... The Bible takes it for granted, and you got to look at some people and say, hey, you know what? They don't know. They may not know what they don't know, and they may not know how much they do know. They might look to the heavens and say, yeah, I don't know. And that's an agnostic. But well, pretty much someone who says they're an atheist, they're just looking for an excuse, and they don't want to have anything to do. We're going to close right there, and we'll pick up next week, Lord willing, the next page. Or we'll do what the Lord has us do, like I said, I just study, I don't know. But number one lesson today is, I can't show you a Bible passage that proves that is the proof that God is, because the Bible just takes it for granted. God is in the beginning, and we'll look at later, God's in the end, and God's in the middle. God's everywhere in the Bible. And hopefully this study will be a blessing to you. Pretty basic. Pretty, I mean, uh, this this is baby food. And maybe I'm having hard digesting it because I'm grown. Maybe I need the baby food too in my older years as my teeth get ready to fall out. Well, we'll stop right there and pick up next week, Lord willing. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. 
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God His Son not sparing sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away.